Find the student relation letter. It has another name followed by social security number, followed by home phone. But in database, we can ignore. There's no specific meaning. Even though the address in ad the advance to the social security number doesn't change the meaning of a student. So even though the relation itself is ordering set, but we ignore such an order. Okay? So that is another characteristic of a relation because relation comes from says somebody believe it may have an order, but uh, we do not. But uh, there are the minor strict uh, res a minor restriction of an order when you create the database and when you create a table using the relational database management system like the MySQL. So I will introduce you later when you uh, consider such an order of the column. Okay. Then eventually we can insert, create the data, the populate the data, then we can have schema as well as the data. This is called the database state. So once database has a state, it's kind of alive. Okay? Then the, if you do something, method, behavior, in terms of object-oriented concept, you can the, add a new data, then database state will be changed. If you cannot guarantee such a database state, if you don't know what's going on, whether this is a previous database state or the next database state, if you cannot guarantee, we are saying the database is inconsistent. If database is inconsistent, nobody uses, right? So for example, you transfer the money to me, but uh, we, cannot, we cannot guarantee the next database state. So we lose the money, right? So nobody used, nobody believed in such a database. So relational database has very, very strong consistency. That's a very important concept. That is the reason still, one of the main reasons Relational database is still most popular DBMS database. Think about the, your, the, without using the MySQL or such a database. In your program, you create the uh, account balance. So you add, insert the data. Then the, you shut down the, your program, start again, where is your balance? It's inconsistent. You cannot keep the, such a uh, the database state. That's the problem. So that's the one of the main reasons is the consistency. However, nowadays such an importance of consistency is less and less. Why? For example, Facebook. Facebook use database. They use a lot of different database management system. Then when you post your message, so you have friend in China. So can your friend see your posted message right away? Or the, if you like your friend message, can he check the, your like right away? It takes a time. Even you cannot see your message right away. When you refresh, it takes a time. The reason is that Facebook is worldwide. So he, the, Facebook has a data base center, data center, US and also China and Africa, something like that. So they are not synchronized real time. So which means, even though you post a message, it will be it will take a time to be synchronized to Africa. So sometimes a day, okay. It's, which means it's inconsistent. Then people use what? It's not critical, even though you cannot check the message or like right away. You may be angry, but uh, you will not be crazy. It's a different from business. So that is the reason, but Facebook need more scale because their size of data is huge, really big data. So they sacrifice the consistency. Instead, they keep the scalability, okay? the performance. So that is a new trend of the database. But relational database, keep in mind, is very strong consistent because of the, such a database is safe. Okay, so we are going to see quickly see the characteristic of the uh, relational model. So relation first, each the tuple data has a value. So 
the as we have seen is a value from domain name domain value from the social security number domain and so on so we have the such a data value from domain okay that's the relational model in database minimum system in in your computer is slightly different later we will talk about such a the different later however you can see the this one and new LF, and new LF, and new LF. What is it is? Null. No value. No value. Null means? Is it, is it the real and new LF? No. Actually, for example, Dick Davidson does not have a home phone number. Now, I do not have a home phone number. So many people, they actually the, uh, throw away their home phone number because of Zephyr. At the time, think about the this data, there is no home phone number. Dick Davidson has the social security number address and this one. And uh, Barbara Benson has the home phone number. These two full this data and this Dick Davidson are different. Right? Because there is no home phone number attribute for Dick Davidson. So we cannot make the student relation because they are different. We can take only the this one. Roland the puncher will be the only data because it has all attribute. This one not, this one not, no, there's no data. So that's the problem when you create the relation. So each tuple should have the same format, same attribute. So to address that issue, we are going to, it's kind of fake data. It's no data. There is no data. So a new LF. There is no data, but we try to keep the same format so we can go on uh, the put the and new LF. So NAR is the use in the database. Nowadays it's used for the computer system a lot. So NAR represents what? Is it zero? No, it's not zero, it's nothing. So it's a very similar concept as do you remember the this one? This is symbol? Yes. What is this? In set theory, in your mathematics, yes, uh, an empty, set. empty set. This is the empty set. It's a set, but there is no element. What about this? Are they same? This is not. This is a set with one element. Element is a this symbol. This is a symbol of empty set. So very similar. It's an empty. NULA is not a value. It's a kind of symbol to represent no value. So null is kind of ghost. That's an image. It's the one interesting. So it's a null. None. So how many elements do we have here? Two. Two. One, nothing. it's a nothing. And ULM means it's a nothing. It's the same as this one. It's just a symbol. So because of that, there is interesting thing. One, two, three. What is the average value of one, two, and three? Average. Two. Two. Average. What about this one? What is the average of one, two, three, and nine? So two, four, three, one point five. Two or one point five. Because there are four elements. It's a still two. Even though we have null, we cannot count. Null doesn't exist. Can you count which are not here? Like the ghost. How many people in this room? There might be several ghosts around here. Can you count the ghost? No, you cannot. So even though you have the not, we that means it's no exist. That's an exist. So don't that if that was the issue long time before when we the calculate the average balance and the so on. So because of the not, okay. So that is a uh, uh, not. So not is the one important characteristic of the relational database not. So that's not, okay. Then there are more the uh, constraints 
So you don't have to worry about the typo. Then the we will start the constraint. So one more time, the, when you talk about the, the, something model, model means it's a concept, it's a rule, it's a constraint, condition. Okay? Then the, this is a relational model. The, we don't want the outside of the, this rule. So to do that, the, we uh, have the several constraints. These are the popular constraints, three main constraints. In addition to that, there are more. So, first, the key concept. First, I'm going to explain. It's not very complicated. You already know. Key constraint means, as I introduced the last time, so think about the, each student has a what? social security number. With the social security number, we can identify the person. Why? Because each social security number is a unit. So, at that time, we can use the SSM as a key. Okay? So key constraint means relational relation. Relation has a key attribute. Okay? Key attribute means they can identify each data. Okay? At that time, key attribute, how can we find the key? This one is uh, the straightforward to find, but how to find the key attribute? For example, excluding the name is unique, maybe the duplicate. So social security number is a key. Everybody know. What about the social security number plus name? Is it unique or not? Yeah. It's also unique because SSN is unique. SSN, the address, is it unique or not? Unique. Unique. SSN, the address and home phone number is it unique or not? Still unique. So all of these are unique. So it's a called a super key. So we can find as many super key as possible, as long as they are unique. But we don't need all of this. What we need? Only this. Only this. Only this. Only this. So. If we take out the this, it's called the minimal super key. Minimal super key means if we remove one of the attribute, is it still the unique? However, if I remove the this one, it will not be the longer the unique. So at the time, this one is called the super key. So what we, a minimal super key. So what we need is actually from the super key, bunch of super key, and find the minimal super key. So at the time, minimal super key is called actually key attribute in relational model. That's different from key in ER modeling. ER modeling, you can find as many key as possible, sometimes no key, but the in the relational model is called the key constraint. Key constraint means each relation, each table should have minimal super key. key. That is the first one. In other words, the, this key is called unique. But when you are saying the unique, this is also unique. So strictly, the mentioned so should be minimal super key. So that is the first constraint. First condition. First, the concept of the relational model. So relational model, relation should have the key constraint. That's the first one. Then, let me use this example. There is a social security number, which is not. And Benjamin, and Lee, and the so on. Is this still the social security number satisfied with the key constraint or not? So if we add uh, Lee, non, SSN, and other information, is this still unique or not? Unique or not? No? So in other words, one, two, three, is it unique or not? Unique. And so what about this one? Is it unique or not? It's different, mm -hmm. but then you can add another now. It's not different. <laughs> it's still unique. Because null, you cannot see null, right? 
Null you cannot compare. It's not comparable. Null means it's nothing. So it's still unique. Okay. okay. It doesn't affect all the other, all the other numbers. No. So null you cannot order. You cannot check, compare. Null means nothing. It's the same as the this one. So still unique. The problem is, so it's still unique. It's still key. Can you find the lead with the social security number? No way. So even though it's a key, it cannot be used for search sometimes, specifically in case of a null. So second constraint of the relational model is entity integrity constraint means the key should not be null. It's called a not null constraint. It should not be null. Not null. The key should not be null, which means it's not null constraint, which is called the entity integrity constraint. Because of that, the anyone who studied before database, relational database and so on, have you ever heard about primary key, PK? So what is the primary key? Why do we call the primary key? It's a unique identifier. Unique and non-null. That is the definition of a primary key. Why? Because when Dr. Yevkos proposed the relational model, key constraint plus because of null, it cannot be used for search. So it's a non-null. Entity integrity constraint means it's a non-null constraint. So to be primary key, first unique and not null constraint. So two constraints are used for primary key. So that is from the definition of primary key from the, these two constraints. The, one more thing before we start the GCP lab. The referential integrity constraint is the, uh, let's use the example of the relational schema. We have the, yes, this one. So we can find the uh, number of relation from the company database. So like the employee, department, department location, and so on. You already know this. And uh, this is not ER diagram. This is called schema. relational schema diagram. So we identify relation with the attribute that satisfy with the uh, requirement of the relation. And also we identify what? Primary key. Primary key. Key attribute. The key unique plus not not. The This one is also. so. This one is underlined. So primary key can be underlined. Be careful, the D number and the D location is not separated. Okay? It's a connected. It's a composite. So by combining two attributes, it's a non null and unique. So question. In relational database, how many primary key for each table? It can be one or more. One or more than one. More than one? No, it's just only one. That is the reason it's called the primary. Later we will see secondary key. Okay? Primary key. So in terms of the ER modeling, how many key actually? More than zero? Yes, possible weak entity. Yes. And one? Yes possible. Two? Yes possible. As many key attributes. That's the difference from ER modeling and relational model. Relational model should must have only one primary key. What if I have multiple key? You need to select one of them as primary key. The other will be <coughs> secondary key. How many secondary key can you have? Zero. Sometimes you do not have the secondary key like here. Sometimes you have one, sometimes you have two. So, what is the main difference between primary key and secondary key? They are almost the same. Okay? You need to select one of them as a primary key. Like, the, I'm key. I have uh, uh, the multiples, the children. I need to select only one key. Is it possible two, three kings? No, only one key will be selected. Okay? So that the other will be sometimes killed out. <laughs> so but 
The other will be secondary key. Secondary key, another question. Can the secondary key uh, be not or not not? Can it be not? No. Can it be not? Secondary key can be not. Okay? It's not very strict. Only primary key will be non null and unique. Secondary key is the only uniqueness. So if your data, you have a multiple key, but this one has the null value, then it cannot be primary key. Also, if both of them are non null and unique, you need to select. For example, so I have a social security number and UBI. Both of them are non null and unique. Then the, I'd like to create the database for advisor, academic advisor. Which one will be primary? UBI. UBI ID is better because it's used in the UBI. It's more convenient. So, and, uh, but I'd like to build the uh, student employee database. UBI ID, social security number, which one will be primary? UBID and social security number for student employment. UBI. It will be, I'd like to select social security number one. It's related to tax. Definitely, you should must have the social security number to work because it should be reported to IRS and the so on. So you can select. Depending on the application, you guys can just select the primary key in case you have a multiple. So, this one is a primary key, primary key, so one primary key, primary, one primary key, and so on. The third constraint is, why don't you take a look at the DM? So employee works for the one department, right? Where can you find the more details? What is the department name? I work for DM01. I try to know department number, I the name. By linking it. Using this value, you can go to the department, D number, then the find the D name here. Which means this DNO is depend on, depending on the, this D number. They are the same, but the, this one, for example, we have the department. Department and the name and ID name. The D number is a primary key, one, two, three. And we have an employee. And social security number and D, and one, two, like this. What about five? Does it make sense? Five is not here, but the uh, works for the five. This is not consistent, it should not be. So because of that, this one depends on this. At that time, this all value should exist on the this one. At that time, this table is at uh, this one is called referency. It's a referency. This one is called reference. So all value in referencing should exist in the referenced column. Okay. At that time, this kind of relationship integral uh, constraint is called referential. Differential integrity constraint. Too long. So we call the, this kind of concept as folding key. key. So you heard about the folding key. key. So folding key actually comes from this constraint. So referential integrity constraint. At the time, this one is called referencing. This, the destination is called reference. So at that time, we can use arrow like this. The reference, referenced. So question, reference should be unique. Is it true or false? Reference should be unique. Yes, one. If we have multiple three, how can we identify which one is which? We don't know. So it should be always unique. Referenced one should be unique. However, reference, it doesn't have to be unique. Like a one, one, one. It's okay as long as you can find the data from reference. 
So don't be uh, confused. Reference is the starting arrow, and this one is head arrow. So you can clarify the this. This is called a foreign key. So foreign key constraint, unlike the uh, entity constraint, primary key constraint, and another constraint. So they are single relation, single attribute. But the reference one is multiple, the two binary. So eventually we can have like the, this kind of relational schema diagram. Let's find as many foreign keys as possible. DNO refer D number, right? Super SSN refer social security number. That makes sense. Super employee, supervise another employee. And what else? This D number, D location, D number in D location, this D number should exist in the department. Project D no is in the D number. And the works on P number is here. Employee SSN is in the SSN manager, also in SSN in employee. This is a dependent. ESSN should be just here. So you need to find the, this one because of that. Sometimes if you have another entity which is not the related, when we are saying the related, it should exist the foreign key. If you do not have the, such a foreign key, but it's the ABC relation, are they same database or not? It's isolated. It's a different database. Okay. If they are related, at least they should have the, such a foreign key relationship. Because of that, probably when you create, if you have experience uh, the, to create the database, relational database on your foreign language class or other project, a lot of time you didn't create a foreign key. Sometimes you ignore the primary key. So in terms of relational model, it doesn't, it's not allowed. So relational database should have a full primary key, also the foreign key. Then we can keep the what? Consistency. So, which means we cannot create the department, the employee who are not assigned the department. So we can keep the condition constraint of the model. Okay, so, I uh, will we'll finalize the, uh, the other part. We have a minor uh, the constraint. But for your homework, why don't you do the uh, exercise? From the, this, the requirement, this is a description, very formalized description of the uh, course book of that, the database. Why don't you draw the, e, the relational schema diagram? To do that, you need to identify the primary key, and uh, you need to identify the all attribute, and relation name, and also foreign key. For regarding to the foreign key, you can imagine with your common sense, like the, for example, social security number should refer to social security number in student. From the name of attribute, you can uh, identify as many foreign keys as possible and draw the relational schema diagram. So next class, the, it takes just a couple of minutes, draw relational schema diagram, handwriting, and the bring to the classroom. Okay? So for your exercise. So let me start here, then the, please uh, the, ready for your laptop, then we are going to start the exercise. Right? Okay, and also pull out your the canvas message. Anyone who do not So because of that, please uh, the copy and paste your link onto your the incognito to tab. Then the, when you are asked the username and password, type your gmail.com. Okay, not your mind.bridgeboard.edu. You can activate, but you cannot create the anything. So you be. Uh, I asked uh, several times, but they, most of the university they do not allow the student as a developer option. And also please download exercise lab the description. So you don't have to follow her instruction. You can just go ahead if you can understand. It's just it's a very detailed explain uh, the explain 
the step by step. So sometimes the interface is slightly changed. I collected this information the last year. So but the main function will be the same. They usually add more and more the option. Please log on your so for your safe the best way is it uh click the open incognito tab. Okay? Then you can use the uh, other browser, Safari, and so on. Sometimes a very minor function is restricted. So you'd better use the com if you have. So uh, I can write the link every, I mean, in the program, I mean in the lab files, GCP lab files. Uh, if you go to the day one with GCP there, if you go down, there is a link. I already send out the uh, link yeah. to activate to them. Okay, so if you click on that, I mean, uh, go to the incognito mode and then click on the link. So, GCP is not free. Okay, you need to pay. It's their computer, so you are purchasing the their service. But the GCP provide the coupon code fifty dollar. Fifty dollar is uh, enough for your practice and project in one semester. But uh, if you need more, let me know. So they usually the welcome to add uh, more activity. So but uh, try to not to waste too much. If you create a really huge database, it's so one day you spend a hundred bucks. Okay? You don't have to put uh, your credit card information. Okay? So if you want, you can do that. If you forgot, it will be charged every time. So here you have to give the coupon uh, code that is there and then click on accept and continue. Well, if you click that, the link that I sent, it will be directly opening here. this one. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. have to give it there. See, I mean, make sure you are in the Gmail account, not in the UB account. I agree. Only then mm -hmm. click on accept. If anyone is stuck, I can come and check. Please raise your hand, I can help if you uh, are stuck or are not understanding. The Google always welcome to use more and more your the coupon. They monitor the, whether the student needs more the, uh, the capacity and the sort. So you don't have to hesitate to what's there, but not to waste. And this is just an overview of what you bring on. The, because it's the not free service, you need to create a billing account. Okay? So you should have the billing account. That is actually the credit card information. If you are purchasing really the GCP for your business, it's a billing account. Then billing of, you are going to create a project, like an HR project, classroom project, or the something like that. So you need to assign billing account to each project. So if you activate the coupon code, one billing account is created. What you need to do is create a project for your practice. Can I create a multiple project? Yes, you can do that. You can assign the same billing account. Later, if you need a commercial, like the, you have your own business, and uh, you can create a billing account with your credit card information. AWS is the same thing. In case uh, you are going to use the AWS later, so any the cloud service needs uh, such a billing information. In other words, credit card information. Wow, they, they changed a little bit interface. Yeah. <laughs> so if you successfully the activate, you can see the left hand side there is a menu. So why don't you go over the they provide nowadays machine learning, AI, storage, security, and developer, and uh, everything. The same thing, AWS, same thing, Microsoft Azure. So also, if you cannot find your service, Always search. On top, there is a menu to search your 
uh, the service. And also, like you can check the other services here. Like depending on that, you can go to the dashboard. For example, if you would like to use the machine learning vision API for your the application, you need to find the vision API, activate, and then you can use the rest for API like that. So these are all the services that are available. Uh, otherwise, you can, uh, I mean, if you want some particular service, you can click, I mean, you can search it here. So you can go to your billing account and check uh, the credit has been added or not. So probably you can see the database, the TPSC 551, the advanced yeah. database design, the billing account. So you can see here like there is hundred dollars in the way. It's a fifty for student. Oh okay. The TBA is uh, her the TA. On this you. If you need more, let me know. We have the enough coupon. So later if you need more, so just uh, the send a message so I can provide. So now uh, we will see how to create a MySQL instance in GCP. So you can click on like SQL here. Uh, do they uh, create a project? Uh, no project. So database service under the storage service. So GCP provides several storage, like the Google storage is just an object-based file system. Even you can back up your data to the storage. It's a very cheap. So for you guys, uh, you, you have a create project option here. So you have to click on create project. I already have some projects created, so this is how it looks after you create a project. So, so in case you should must have at least one project. Uh, to okay. create an instance. So, so you can go and click on like uh, the create project. There is a naming door. Yes. So you can uh, create any name of project, but uh, please use the CPSC CPSC five five one as your name and your UBID. Then we, the DBI and me can easily recognize who is who. Okay, please use uh, the your. Uh, UBID with a host number. And also invite her the, as a member of that project. Then the DBR can the access your project for grading purpose. And uh, you can click on create. Oh yes, so you can name whatever, but uh, please put your UBID with the push number, 551, or the AD, then uh, we can recognize whose project is this. Why don't you open the project description, uh, the exercise lab description in detail dimension. I cannot see the course drop uh, If you play uh, what we say, do it again. Okay? Nothing to lose. It's not on your computer, it's on the server side. Once you activate the few component, you can do whatever you want. So just uh, the use uh, this service as uh, your second box, uh, as a playground. And also, for those who already did, right hand side, if you click the right hand side icon for your the user profile, the, they provide the several the service like the for beginner. Right here. So you can see the some the free tutorial or the some the basic stuff like that. If you go there, you will find it for your menu. So that there are many tutorials you can go through it, and also the lab uh, notes that is provided to you. It has like clear steps on what to do, like what all you can explore. So you can go to that, and uh, uh, please open the lab uh, word file. I mean PDF file that is there in the UB file.
Yes. And also, there is a, if you see that document, there is a link to the Google Drive that I upload the uh, old material. So you can just, we do not go over each and every step, okay? So, uh, but uh, you do better practice. Just one or two hours to train up. Yeah, so if you go to files, uh, in the GCP you have uh, uh, this UB GCP exercise lab where, I mean, you can go into it and you can see uh, like uh, machine learning techniques and how to, I mean, how to use them, what all techniques are there, like These what all services are, the are over, there. Overall GCP practice, not database specific. Yeah. Database specific is a DB exercise lab uh, description. So uh, you can go into that and view that and do it. So now we are going to do the exercise lab for uh, database. So you have to go to the exercise lab folder and then click on DB exercise lab. And in parallel, like you can keep that in and then follow it. Uh, I mean, even I am following the same step. So in case you are stuck, you can go back or you can call me. You are in incognito. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Go up to the previous. And not this, go back to the incognito. So you actually type on your end. You can open the GCP console. Oh, it's already open. Are you actually you know, changing uh -huh. the URL? So you can. <coughs> One more tip. So what if after the, this semester I'd like to practice more at the time? So if I offer the same course uh, during the summer, I can provide, but uh, you can use a $300 free credit for each Gmail account. So you can uh, activate the $300, it's a one time for each uh, account, so you can use uh, up to the 300 bucks. So this is your project dashboard. So now to create a, an instance to this project, I am searching for SQL or this other instance service. So this is the one that you have to click on. So here you are creating a MySQL instance. So in GCP it's called a Cloud SQL. It's a MySQL database. Okay, And the AWS used the IBS relational database. You can select the different the vendor of the DBMS. Uh, so, I mean, you can see here you have an option to select PostgreSQL or SQL Server. So, for us, we are using MySQL. So, uh, choose this option. Because of that, uh, between Oracle and Microsoft, as a Google, they actually lose it. Because uh, right now, MySQL belongs to the Oracle, but the GCP use the open source. <laughs> the Google use the you know, owned by the. Uh, so uh, give a name to your instance and uh, please set the password as one two three four five. Otherwise, like uh, it will give a problem while accessing if you set a different one. You can use a different password, but uh, we recommend you to use this one. If you can remember, and uh, it's the first time, it's just a practice. But uh, if you create your own, you can first have your own. Password, but uh, this is practice. Uh, you have to select the region as US, US East 1 and then US East 1 B zone. Let me explain the what is the region and the zone. Uh, this is uh, the remote the system, it's a cloud. So there is a data center. Data center mm -hmm. is uh, worldwide. So region is the uh, US. The with you in the US, North America, there are Northeast region and data center. Another one is the West, and so you can see the list of them. So, nearby one is a cheap, and the far, further one is expensive. Why? The network. So, because you need to use the network. So, that is the reason. Under the reason, there are several different zones. So, you can select the near, so you can see the East one, BC. 
So under the reason, there is a join. The reason is that in one data center, if one server is down, something problem, we cannot use it. So in, even when you create the system, you can be different the join under the same reason. That will be safe. Okay. So that is, so first time, why don't you select the nearby? Let's say US East. So this is, these are the nearest uh, regions and uh, zones to us, so we are selecting this and then click on create. Then when you click the create, what happened? They are not going to buy the server and just one day allocate the resource, computing resource with the virtualization. They create the virtual machine, virtual computer under the, their the physical infrastructure. Then set up the security based on the, your the request and also the, they apply the billing, the, uh, the billing the information because they need to count. It's accounting information. Then create the, after they create the virtual machine, it's a computer, then they create the MySQL database instead. So that's the reason it takes a time Mostly it's a copy and start the service. And I strongly suggest to shut down the your system, not delete, and instead the shutdown, other than to avoid any the, uh, the waste of money. So please the shutdown or pending if you are not, if you are not using. Database service is uh, slightly expensive than other service. As you all know, cloud they charge on the uh, I mean on the percentage of what you use. So uh, it is suggested you have to stop your instance. Like whatever is running, you have to stop it. You don't have to terminate it. You have to just stop it so that like that will not get paid. Yeah, they will not charge you if you stop. Even though you stop, the your virtual machine will be removed. But when you stop, it will be the start again. So. Uh, they will not charge it if you start. But uh, terminate, it takes some time. You need to set up everything. But the start and start, you don't have to quit again, just to use, continue to use. Resume your ship system. Anyone who whose uh, instance is created? Is it still going on? Yeah, it's the first time created, so they allocate the resource and the sun in May. Uh, take a time, but uh, eventually you will. After you create, the next step will be you should be able to connect. Okay. What is the main issue when you connect the database instance on GCP cloud service? What is the main issue? It's a network security. Okay. So it should go through the a lot network. So some of the service. So your request MySQL instance at uh, MySQL the port is uh, disabled by the UV side or the uh, GCP side. So you need to check the, your IP address and open. In the meanwhile, you can uh, click on like my IP address so that will give your IP address public IP address so that we can add it to our MySQL for the uh, access. GCP check the, your incoming the IP address, so you need to check the what is your IP address. Please be patient. Yeah. I think that each one has the same IP address because you are connecting the same access point. And the meanwhile, why don't you go through the uh, exercise slot description and the GCP and uh, open the another console. Another console and uh, uh, go over the travel, the different menu. You can do the voice recognition, the app the very easily. They provide all the service. So if you, your instance is created, yeah. it will be like a green. Uh, it, it will go into the green, so you can click on the instance. 
So uh, this is the dashboard of the instance where like you can see there are options for editing, import, export, mm -hmm. I mean restart in the instance oh, topic, yes, delete it and then clone it. Uh, cloning is like if you want some instance of the same type you can just clone it. So uh, if you see here you have some configurations you can even edit the configuration. Click on edit. And then you can see that public IP is enabled. You can do exactly the same thing what you can do uh, after you install your own mm -hmm. database on your laptop. So it's nothing different, even more. Uh, so uh, go to the machine type and storage and uh, you can change the storage to dbf1 micro. That is the smallest storage that is available. So you, you will be so you show you the all the different options and menu. And so you have to you can create the error, you can use the HA, and the key, and you see what's going on. Which one are we changing it to? Uh, uh, the data becoming uh, DBF1 micro. Uh, yeah. So just go over. If you want to change it, yeah. why don't you go back to your instance, the dashboard? And then you can click on save. And if you add it, like this one. I strongly suggest to be familiar with the command line also. Right now it's a web interface, you can select the menu, but uh, eventually you'd better uh, the use the command line interface. So after uh, the way of run checking enable binary login, we have to just save it all. Yeah, I mean uh, you can save it. Okay. This is the same So you don't have to change it every time. Once you create it, so you can the, uh, select the option. HA is uh, like the high availability. It's uh, like the uh, standby system. And backup, you can set up the backup in case uh, you need to restore the data. So he here you can so see. So this is important to connect to your database. So here you can see the IP address. This is the public IP address of the instance. So. so Whenever you use a, a cloud service, so once you create your own instance, they provide a, most service provide one public IP address, which means outside of the cloud service, the, you are able to connect your instance using the public IP. Then you need to. As a default, it's a block, so nobody can access. Okay, so you are going to allow the your IP address to open, like to open the door for your IP address. I realized that one when I had the sixty seven student in one classroom, when we tried to use the same location, it's a Delay, really, when we create the uh, uh, same instance. But uh, this might be okay. If you want to use the same instance, 
this is one pro tip. If you are very interested in the cloud service, AWS and so on, you need to understand uh, something basic, found, uh, fundamental of networking. So specifically, AWS requires the strong background in the network to create the uh, public the cloud or the private cloud and the so on. At the time, you need to understand what is the public IP and what is the private IP, how to set up the, uh, the network and the design, such a thing. So if you click on connections here. Left hand side, the connection menu. Uh, you, will, you will be able to add a network. Here you will be adding the IP address that you are going to access, I mean, uh, from which you are going to access the instance. So you need to add your IP address that you search before. However, if you go back to your home, if you are using different network, it will not work. You need to add your the home IP address also. If you change your the laptop or the client, you need to. Uh, you have to click on done and see your changes. So uh, yeah, when you're accessing yeah. it from you your to home, you have to add one by one. To so avoid that, you can open all IP address. Oh. That's not safe. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can give any name that you want to. Like I just gave it class. You can define any name. If you really don't, if you do not worry about the security, you can open all IP address. You don't have to change. But anybody can access the your instance. For practice, it's okay. okay. Uh, so here, uh, you, you have added your IP address. So for now, uh, I mean, uh, now we will be connecting to the, to the instance from, uh, like, now I'm showing you from the, uh, G Cloud shell how to connect it, but once if you can uh, download the, the MySQL into your local system, then uh, in the next lab I will, I mean, I can check it out. Like there, there are steps, the step is there in the, uh, I mean, in, in the document to connect it, but now uh, for now we will see if you are able to connect it using G Cloud. So let me explain the what she mentioned. So. This is a database that you create and on GCP, okay? So this is your laptop. Then the, you open your IP address one, 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 okay? If you do not open it, so you are not able to access. However, when you access the, this, the, your database, you should have a client. Yesterday, last class, I mentioned about the server and client. So you should have the MySQL, Client module. If you are using MacBook, you can. Uh, you are you using the Brew Homebrew? So using Homebrew, you can uh, install the Brew install MySQL. That's it. But otherwise, if you are using the PC, you need to download the MySQL client. Okay, you don't have to install the entire server. Only MySQL client. Okay. Then from MySQL client, you can specify the IP address, public IP address of your instance that you the receive the, on your client, then connect, okay? If you change your location like the school, you need to add the, this another IP address, 1112, otherwise you cannot. So this is another the struggling the, if you are testing. Then, if you don't want to change every time, you can open all IP address which is not safe, but practice is okay. Then, what she gonna do right now is, because many of you guys do not have a client yet, we can use Cloud Shell. It's inside the GCP. So if you click the Cloud Shell, it, uh, it's a temporary instance. So temporary server will be created. It's 30 minutes? Yeah, 30 minutes is available. 
without pay. It's a free small computer inside the GCP. Okay? You can access clicking on the button over there. That will open the cloud shell. If you go to top menu, there's a shell. So if you click, it's a temporary computer, virtual uh, the machine. It's only available 30 minutes. You can see the command line interface. That has a MySQL client, so you are able to connect. There are two ways to use the client. One is graphical user interface. You can the, fill out the menu, connect. Second thing is you can use the command line is, interface, MySQL. So for the G Cloud, uh, the command would be G Cloud SQL. The My Instance is the name of the instance that you have created. Like you can see your instance name. You uh, hyphen hyphen user is equals to root. This is uh, like you are accessing the root user. So if you click on enter, uh, it will ask for password. So G Cloud is not MySQL client. Yes. It's a G Cloud is the Google Cloud Platform provide their own menu. They implement their own MySQL client. So on your laptop, if you want to access your the MySQL database, you can use the MySQL command. Do you remember the last time the each and every DBMS provide their own client? MySQL is MySQL. DB2 is a DB2. Oracle is a SQL plus. And uh, Informix has a DB access like that. So this is MySQL. You can use it. It's the same format, username and password. The old description, is a, they are described in the exercise lab document. And your home, you can practice. Yeah. It will ask for password. You should give the 12345, whatever the password that you set up. And it will actually log into MySQL. Like you can see here. It is connected to the MySQL instance. So I do not suggest to use a G Cloud. Yeah. The, in case you are not able to set up the network or the, you, you do not have the SQL client, so you can use. Otherwise, please use your laptop as a client, then you can feel the kind of experience to connect the remote the system. So uh, each one of you can send a screenshot of this so that I will know that your instance is created and you're able to connect it. So your homework is after you create, please connect. The at least one time connect your instance, then the send a screenshot of your the, uh, the connection. Okay, yes. Yeah, you can uh, like uh, click on show databases so that it will show whatever databases are there. Here okay, you can yeah. do whatever like my uh, query yes. you want to do. You can create tables. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Then the... Uh, oh, you did. Uh -huh. So here you can run that one. Okay, so your homework is create the instance, okay, then the connect. So either from your laptop or from the G Cloud, whatever, at least one time connect. Then the uh, take a photo or the, uh, the capture the screenshot and submit to the canvas. Any questions? It's for your practice. If you have any doubt or the question, please contact Jay or me. Then uh, you guys can uh, start uh, your the uh, the GCP for the mic.